Hey everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your all around security nerd and host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting April 28, 2014. It's been an extremely busy InfoSec News Week, but I'm still going to limit myself to three stories, starting with a story about the White House commenting on vulnerability disclosure. Last week I had a story about how uh, the FBI used an ex-anonymous person to do attacks on un other countries using zero-day flaws in well-known web control frameworks. In this case, it was Plesk. Well, this week, the White House, specifically a guy from White House called Michael Daniel, released a blog post talking about the U.S. government's disclosure policy for zero-day vulnerabilities. Ultimately, he started talking about all the rumors that NSA knew about Heartbleed, which he still denies. He went on to talk about how the U.S. will actually hold on to vulnerabilities for use for intelligence gathering. It basically talked about how he does understand that uh, vulnerabilities can put the internet at risk. Uh, the U.S. government has no interest in putting the internet at risk because private citizens and the economy depends on the internet. Nonetheless, he still talks about the fact that the U.S. government, in some cases, will hold on to vulnerabilities for use in intelligent gathering. He put a list about uh, what they think about when they hold on to vulnerabilities, like how risky they are, uh, how many people they affect, how easy it is for bad guys to find them out, how easy they are to fix, and so on and so forth. In either case, I think it was an interesting post, but I still think it's kind of scary that our own government is holding on to zero-day vulnerabilities in some cases. While I can see why you might want to use them for intelligence gathering, if you can find a vulnerability, chances are bad guys can find the vulnerability too. Anyways, whatever your opinion is on the government using zero-day vulnerabilities, it is really interesting to see the White House actually talking about cybersecurity. You know, I never thought I'd see a day and age where there'd be a White House blog post talking about vulnerability disclosure. So it goes to show you how important the information security industry has become. The second story for the week is news of traffic light hacking. This comes from a well-known security researcher called Cesar Cerudo, who works for IOActive. And in a Wired post, he shows a video of how he can actually hack a particular traffic control system or traffic monitoring system that many uh, cities' traffic lights use to control when lights turn red or green. Long story short, Cerudo showed how certain traffic control systems, ones that are used in many, many cities in the U.S. and also in cities in France and Australia and many other places, uh, basically they're these systems that have sensors built into the road that monitor whenever cars go over them. And these sensors are wirelessly connected to normal wireless access points that then gather information about how busy a particular street is. Now these systems don't directly directly control traffic light systems. However, uh, many cities' traffic light systems use these sensors to decide how regularly to turn lights from red to green and so on and so forth. In any case, Caesar showed that you can actually access these APs quite easily. The communication between the sensor and the AP is totally not encrypted, so you can gather all that data. More importantly, you can inject your own packets to the AP and thus trick it in some way. For instance, showing that there might be more or less cars than really are there on a particular road. And Caesar talks about how you can use this to actually adjust traffic lights. So it's a very interesting hack that affects industrial control systems. Now the vendor in question who creates this system actually says the system is working as it was designed. It was never designed to be encrypted because they don't think the communications between the sensor and the wireless access point is that important. Nonetheless, it's a very interesting hack, so we'll continue to follow this story. And be sure to check out Cesar Cerudo's blog post on this if you're interested in more details about it. 
So the biggest story this week is definitely some zero-day vulnerabilities. One in particular, but actually two came out. This story, the big one anyway, started over the weekend where a well-known security vendor released details about a zero-day vulnerability in Internet Explorer. They found attackers on the Internet leveraging a zero-day use-after-free memory corruption vulnerability on malicious websites. And long story short, if you accidentally visit one of these websites, it leverages this vulnerability to take full control of your computer. Now this was big news throughout the week. Uh, we released a blog post on Monday day talking about how you can mitigate some of the effects of this zero-day vulnerability. But later in the week, Microsoft released an out-of-cycle patch that does fix this vulnerability. So if you use Internet Explorer, go get this patch. And by the way, there's good news for Windows XP users. Last month, Microsoft end of life Windows XP, which means they weren't going to release any more patches for it. But this was such a big flaw, and it did affect Internet Explorer 6 on Windows XP, so they went ahead and patched it for Windows XP as well. One other aside, WatchGuard XTM appliances can protect you. If you have uh, IPS security service, we do have signatures to catch this zero-day IE flaw. And you can also use our proxies to block flash content. While this is a flaw in IE, they actually use some flash vulnerabilities to get past some of Microsoft's uh, Windows memory uh, protections. By the way, I mentioned two zero-day vulnerabilities. While it didn't get as much news as the IE one, one, one of our security partners, Kaspersky, also found a zero-day flash vulnerability. So if you have Adobe Flash, as most people do, this zero-day flaw would allow an attacker to again take over your computer in a drive-by download. And on Monday, I believe it was, Adobe did release a patch for Flash. So if you have Flash, go patch it as well. So that's it for this week's episode. I hope you found something interesting or useful. There was, by the way, a ton of other news. There's a lot of interesting Heartbleed updates for people that still want to learn about that. AOL was apparently breached, so if you're an AOL customer, you might need to change your password. And if you're a Firefox user, there was a big Firefox patch. So if you want uh, any information about these or the many other information security stories, be sure to check the blog post associated with this video, which I post on our WatchGuard security securitycenter.com blog site. Go check out that site for all my latest posts. Finally, if you're into the Game of Thrones, this week HelpNet Security published another of my articles uh, mixing pop culture with information security. So if you want the six information security tips I learned from Game of Thrones, be sure to check out that article. As always, follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdapt. And you can also follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.